Oh boy, what's the old man up to now? Trying to get the boat in order. And I've been struggling with this one. And had to go on a couple levels of analysis more than usual. But a couple things kind of screwed me up. First being, well, I don't know if you can see where the timing is, but actually the first being, the voltage for the whole system was down around four volts. So I kind of had to wire a way around that because I didn't have enough voltage to run the ignition system actually. So look at that, that thing is up there around, what do you think? Oh boy. Four, eight, you know, 12 at least degrees advance, that's too far. So I've got to retard the timing from. Might be why it's hard to start. But the second thing I have to do is to see whether or not those uh, weights in that distributor are actually playing out and changing the timing the way it's supposed to. But looking at that, I'm, I've got some things to worry about for Let's get the timing right. I put a set of points in there and I set the gap at 18,000. That's pretty far for the course. So I had to replace the coil. Uh, that coil was, was dead. So anyway, let me loosen up the distributor and rotate it, see if I can get this to run a little bit better. All right, we got nice oil pressure, 40 pounds, nice idle at 700 RPMs. The engine temperature is holding at about 160 now after a little bit of time. Let's see if the timing advances when I give it some throttle. problem I've been having with it is the restarts because the idle was set too high with the timing and I needed to set the idle on the carburetor too low for it to restart. See I need to give it just a little bit more idle. Kind of an interesting thing. I wonder if it's the fuel pump, where if I crank it, then shut it off, and then crank it, it lights right off. I'll actually just let right off. I'm going to give it just a little bit more uh, carburetor, a little more throttle, and I might retard the timing just a little bit more. We'll see. So what I do is I brought the timing down just a little bit, and then over here I adjust the throttle up just a little bit to see if I can get it to fire off a little quicker. And the other thing I want to check is see if I'm charging, because I've been starting and restarting. I'm going to put the multimeter on the battery, and I'll stop it. I'm going to put the multimeter on the battery and if you're starting to see, if you see the voltage begin to creep up. Well, it's already at 14 volts, so it's not going to get any higher than that. So what that means is it's charging. Let's shut it off and restart it and see if I'm happy with the way it goes. Now the spec says five or six hundred RPMs and I've got it at just about six. All right. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. Well, we moved a little further forward and blew the budget on the trailer. I think. You know, I just see a gazillion of these darn things for, you know, a couple hundred to three hundred dollars. And I bought that for a hundred bucks thinking, you know, maybe that'll end up being 
you know, something I can save some money on. Well, new tires, there's another two. I put in new wheel bearings and new lights. So we're up in the $400 range. That was $60, that tower, that uh, winch. Yeah, it's all new. But you can do better than that for sure. Pull the Tatsu out, and clean it off, and, and uh, get it fired up again. Took the shellac off the seats. Heat gun and, uh, and a putty knife basically did that. Put some urethane on top just to protect it some. And then made a sandwich with steel plates to hold the pedestal and the seat. Offset the seat just a little bit so it's easier to operate the little motor. You know, that's the little Tahatsu we had running a while back. And the main structure of the boat's pretty, pretty good. Got rid of all that goofy stuff that was up front. Got one more project. We're going to put this up in the front to make it easier for a person uh, to sit up there, but also to put something over the top of, say, a tackle box and you know other things that I might want to have out of the weather. There's a different motor going to go on this boat at some point. I have a 15 horse Johnson that I'm getting the parts to convert it into a short shaft and it's going to go on as well. And I don't know. I mean, it's just a little aluminum boat. I just about matched the budget I was looking for. I was looking to have it fish ready for $750. All right. And it's pretty close. I'm going to redo the transom. Um, just get a piece of wood there. That's going to happen, I guess, in a day or so. That Tahatsu came from the landfill. Someone threw it away because it, it wouldn't run. And I think I did a little segment on that where once I put a fuel pump in there, got the oil out of the fuel pump and carb, it ran just fine. So, so what's next? i um, going to finish the front seat. going to put that white thing up in there. Get a couple of life vests. And then go do sea trials, I guess. And uh, that'll move it. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to actually jump up on plane. The thing that makes me laugh about this is this bow is actually rated for 40 horsepower. Let me see if it'll show the tag on film here. I don't think 40 horsepower is going on this boat. But what is going to go on this boat um, is a 15 horse Johnson once I have it converted to short shaft. Well, this is sea trials to what I lovingly call my On Golden's Pond Boat, you know? I don't know if anyone ever even heard of that movie, but it was one of those James Stewart, uh, oh, I can't remember, remember her name, famous actress about old people. Yeah. Living peacefully at the end. One of the hallmarks of that movie was old people floating around in you know, a little rowboat, so. That's what I call this. Now, actually, this is that little five horse Tahatsu we got going the other day. You know, I just want to see if it's pumping good and you can see from the stream that it is. And I'm not going to try to catch a fish today. I just want to go through the process of getting it in and out of the water. Now, what we've done is we stripped the seats and put some polyurethane on it and mounted a little pedestal for me to fish off of when I get to calm waters and today I think the mission is just to get a feel for the area it's pretty shallow water and I might put the fish finder out and just see what we have for a, for a facility here this is Whitney Point Reservoir pretty famous but let's just see what this thing does get island really low and
thing that happens is it just makes more weight. Well, it worked. Got it on the trailer. Got to tidy up the straps a little bit. And uh, came right up. I guess one of the takeaways that I have from that is it'd be nice to have a better ramp. The second thing is I got several hours and I've only used that much. It was, what, maybe a couple of quarts, maybe half a gallon of, of fuel. There's enough in there to last all summer at the rate that motor burns fuel. I guess we'll try that from the other ramp, I think, the next time instead of this little muddy thing. The other ramp's got some docks on it and makes it a little easier to get in and out. But I think the point is I was able to successfully put the boat in, get all the way out there, do a little fishing, didn't catch anything worth mentioning, and get all the way back and get it back on the trailer by myself. So I would call that mission accomplished.